Hello everybody, these are some of the conversations I had recently. One, with a senior account manager from LinkedIn in Ireland. Number two, a private equity investor from the Bay Area. And number three, one of the largest independent individual investors from Ireland. And in this conversation, I'm going to cover my unfiltered thoughts around what the conversations were about and what you and I can take away from these conversations. So let's get started with the first point regarding the perception and the thought process of how AI is going to change the world. And by the way, these conversations were not something which I initiated. These were coming directly from them while the conversation was going around different directions. So the first point is one of the largest individual investors from Ireland mentioned that AI is not internet. It is not creating the impact similar to when internet was invented. He compared AI with electricity. He said that is the level of impact that AI is going to create. And on the other end, I also met a Google employee and he said that the company discussions within Google are centered around in such a way that it is not internet or it is not electricity, but rather it is fire. That is the level of impact that these big corporations are anticipating that AI will have. Now, why do they believe in these things? Because they are looking at the exposure of how, what AI is already doing in the world. They have seen through different pitches what are these startups proposing what kind of change we are going to observe in the next three to five years this is massive there is absolutely no question about how much impact ai would be having on our lives at least not at the top level in any corporate and hence when they are looking to even hire people when they are looking to invest in new startups the priority is always going towards people who have a good or at least a decent knowledge about AI right now. If you are in the tech world, or even if you are in the, let's say, very, very different industry compared to tech, which is legal, law, right, or healthcare, or finance, any industry doesn't really matter, you are expected to have some knowledge of AI. It could be the basic knowledge, it could be a tool, or it could be something else. And that would be your trump card going forward. And what are the industries? What if there are any specific industries that are going to be impacted? There is not even a discussion around that. Every single industry. Let me give you an example. We were going through a pitch on how nutritious food could help athletes. And the investor asked one point blank question. How are you implementing AI? And the presenter mentioned that, hey, this is about nutrition for college students. So there is no role for AI. The investor very quickly highlighted that there are multiple ways in which you can implement AI. And I would recommend you to use that because for me on the other options on the table, there is AI and the estimated impact is much, much higher. So I will rather pick up those opportunity. End of the day, it is about making money for the corporate and also for the investors. So please do keep an eye out on that. The second interesting element that came up in the conversations was, again, folks from Google, Microsoft, LinkedIn, whole lot of big tech companies from Dublin when I had these conversations. By the way, Dublin is known as the Silicon Valley of Europe. And what was I doing there? I teach one of the courses in Masters in Entrepreneurship in the best university, arguably the best university in Ireland, that is Trinity College Dublin. And the conversations with all these corporate employees was again going in the same direction. People were saying that, hey, I'm happy where I am. I earn way a lot more money than what I imagined five years back, 10 years back. But if I look forward in my career, I don't think I'll continue in the corporate world. I want to quit. I want to pick up teaching. One of the guys told me directly that, hey, I would love to do teaching like you. And other person mentioned that, hey, I want to coach students. I want to coach young kids on football. So people at the end of the day, they are looking their corporate career as something which they can make good money, but end of the day, leave it, right? Rather sooner than what a lot of you would be expecting. And I have also met a private equity investor from Bay Area, and he said that, he is close to 58, 60 years old right now. And he very clearly mentioned that, hey, I'm already done with the corporate world and I'm not interested in earning a lot more money at this point. I would rather spend more time with my kids. And that is what I have been doing for the last five years. So you can see that satisfaction of the corporate world is not about just earning more money, but people are transitioning slowly towards how do we get ourselves involved in something which we are passionate about. Could be education, could be football, could be something else. And it magically can't happen one day. You have to keep an eye out on what's your passion area and let it 
thrive through along with your corporate job. I know a lot of our corporate jobs suck big time. Our managers would never take any favorable calls that we want them to take. They have their own reasons and we have our own reasons. But what do we do? We just suck it up for a few years without being emotionally attached to the organization and we move on to better pastures. Once money is not anymore a problem for us. And when I mean money is not a problem anymore, I'm not talking about a very extravagant lifestyle, but something simple which we are comfortable with. End of the day, COVID has changed the perception of what we need from our work life for a lot of us. So let's see what it holds in the next few years. And this was one of the primary conversations on the dinner tables. And my third takeaway was rather not from the conversations, but from the place where I was teaching. I was teaching to 40 individuals from a lot of different countries, a very diverse cohort, and I started talking with them. I'll in fact release a podcast with one of the students from the classroom. And a few important takeaways. The first one is beyond India, in a lot of countries, there is no such thing called as a placement support from the university. Companies don't come and there is no day zero, day one, day two. There's no such kind of thing. Well, the placement teams within the universities support the individuals for resume preparation, for cover letter preparation or something else, but they don't put you in touch with the employers. You have to go ahead and start networking with people. I personally have faced this situation. I have known a lot of people who have done this and I personally believe you will value what you are getting a lot more when you do this. And this also prepares you for the real world. In case something happens, you already have a big network and you can start reaching out to them. It's not like any of our IIMs where companies are coming in and you just go sit in the interview and you walk out. I personally believe if you don't have a company coming in and you have to cold call and reach out to people, you will go through a lot more troubles, but you will also come out as a more established individual. And again, just another different element to this entire conversation. This is a developed country. Ireland is a developed country and Hence, the students who come to this country and the classroom, the emphasis is on rather learning, networking, experiencing the cohort rather than just jobs. In India, of course, we fight for survival. We fight for our jobs because there is always competition behind our bank. But in a developed country, that's not the case anymore. So keeping that in perspective, I just want to highlight what I've been observing in different universities around the world and that became more prominent at Trinity College Dublin. The fourth point I want to highlight is about how Dublin as an ecosystem has evolved. Now, why is this important? The primary reason is it's a tech capital of Europe and there is a lot of opportunity for talent. And why am I highlighting this? A lot of people apply to jobs in Dublin, whether it is big corporates like Fang, Mang, or even if it's in the startup world, they apply directly sitting from India to jobs in Dublin. And they do get these jobs. I'm again referring you to a podcast that I've recently released where the individual has moved from India to Dublin through an online application, right? So please do watch that podcast. But end of the day, Dublin as an ecosystem has evolved a lot. There are a lot of opportunities. Why? Simply, it is the corporate headquarters of all the American multinational corporations for their Middle East and Australian operations as well. So please do not ignore that small, tiny little country, which is also English speaking and which also offers a lot of opportunities. I've personally witnessed it. There are more than 1600 startups in that one particular city. Dublin and they need tech talent right now. And the fifth point is regarding a point which I keep referring to usually which is upskilling. And I had a conversation with again these folks from LinkedIn, Google, Microsoft and a few other companies and I don't want to take names here but the guys mentioned very clearly that there are a lot of upskilling opportunities within their company. They have created new modules, they have brought in great speakers, they have curated these wonderful master classes and course materials but unfortunately nobody is utilizing them. He said that it's a mandatory thing so people do attend it but they move out and they continue to do with their day job and if an assignment or if there is an assessment the folks don't perform well because they say we are busy with our job we all are busy with our jobs and hence even if there is a free upskilling opportunity within the company a lot of us wouldn't take it but as i refer back to the first point of this video if you are not looking forward to upskill yourself in ai it's not a good thing for your entire career so i would recommend if you have any kind of upskilling opportunities within your company go grab them you might find yourself busy but that short Short-term busyness should not come in the long-term upskilling game. I hope these reflections are useful. Please do share it with your friends if you find something useful and also click on that like button.
will help the YouTube to share with a larger audience. See you again, guys. Take care. Bye bye.